Hi, everyone. We are here with Crystal Lopez. She is the ETV specialist with BCFS. And she's joining us today to share some of her information and resources available. Um, I also wanted to take a moment to introduce our new outreach coordinator. Her name is Jaylene Garza. Hi, everybody. Um, as Jennifer said, my name is Jaylene Garza. So I am the uh, new outreach coordinator. And I just kind of wanted to just get to you uh, a little bit about myself. I know I sent everybody um, kind of like a, a welcome email up for myself, um, but I want to say thank you for participating. Um, so the reason, you know, why we do a little presentations like this and with Crystal being so generous of her time is just resources for you. It's her main, main thing. And so I'm really glad that you're able to take your time, you know, out of your day as well to go ahead and join us. Um, so obviously, if you have any questions, Jennifer's going to kind of explain a little bit more what the process is. is. Thank you, Jaylene. And so uh, before we get started, just want to uh, let y'all know a little information. So Optima, if you are um, here today joining us live, we will go ahead and enter your continuing education hours in for you through Optima. If you're watching the recording, um, you either have the option to enter those yourself through Optima, or you can shoot Jaylene Garza an email at jaylene.garza at brushcountrycasa.org. Um, she'll be able to either help you enter that in, or she can enter that for you. And so uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump in and get started with Crystal. One last thing is if you have any questions, please feel free to either, um, you know, ask them aloud, or you can go ahead and put them in the chat, and then I'll be sure to ask those questions for you. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining um, today to hear about um, basically any benefits for a uh, youth with foster care experience if they decide to continue um, their education after high school. Um, so my name is Crystal Lopez and I am an ETV specialist. Um, ETV stands for Education and Training Voucher. Um, so this program is under BCFS Health and Human Services and we cover the whole state of Texas. Um, our group consists of myself um, and my coworker, Drew Melton. So we're both um, ETV specialists. So we're pretty much the face of the program, um, spreading awareness, you know, helping out making sure that like staff that work with um, our youth and also youth um, coming from foster care know about these benefits um, and what ways they can access them. Um, we have uh, four coordinators um, processing applications throughout the state of Texas um, for those who apply for the ETV program. Um, and of course we have a program director. Um, so I just wanna mention real quick in 2017, um, Texas did pass basically a house bill um, stating that it requires high school uh, counselors or staff um, that work with youth coming from foster care to basically inform them about their um, benefits. Um, what happens is sometimes, you know, there's new staff coming in, they're not aware of it. So myself and Drew try to reach out to all the school districts in Texas um, every year. Um, sometimes we get a lot of um, good response and sometimes not. So if you have any connections with the school district, um, please give them our information um, and we can come out to their schools and um, talk about these benefits to the youth or, or even staff um, that work with the youth. Um, so the first um, benefit that our youth have is the Texas tuition and fee waiver. So this is a state law um, and all it does is waive um, payments of tuition and fees at any public college or university in the state of Texas. Um, and the way it's a basically a letter um, that the youth can obtain uh, from their caseworker. Basically, usually they get it in their last year, so their senior year before graduating high school, um, and they can get it from their caseworker or even a, what's called a POW caseworker. Um, so if they're involved in the POW program, which is the preparation for adult living, um, they can obtain this letter. And what happens is um, they will they will provide this a copy of this letter to the school. That way, the the payment of uh, tuition and fees are waived. Um, something to know about this is that it has to be activated um, before they turn 25 years old. Um, so once it is activated, they have it for a lifetime. So once they activate it, they can get as many degrees as they want. They can 
go to school forever if they want, um, but it has to be activated before 25. Um, there's no age limit to enroll, so they don't need to go to school right away after graduating high school, um, but as long as they do it before they turn 25. And there's no limit on credit hours, so that means they can only uh, enroll in one class. So they just need to take one class um, to activate this tuition fee waiver. So for um, youth that I talk to that are not sure about continuing school, I tell them to take a class that may be some interest of them. Um, I know they have like photography classes or art classes or, you know, even something related to sports, anything that has an interest to them. I'm like, just take that one class. So you unlock this waiver. And then in the future, if you decide to go back, you know, it's already unlocked so you can continue using it. Um, it also doesn't depend on a grade or GPA. So if they take that one class and they don't pass it, um, they still get to keep this benefit. So even if they take that one class and they don't pass it, they still have this benefit for a lifetime. Um, also, it works for online classes if they decide to live out of state. Um, so I have a we have a youth that lives in Florida, but she's taking online classes at UT Austin. Um, so she's able to use the tuition and fee waiver so they can live out of state as long as the school that they're taking online classes for is in the state of Texas. Um, here's a list of basically eligibility. Um, for youth, um, basically, in general, if they touched foster care. Um, most likely they'll be eligible. But again, that's um, determined by DFPS. Um, so like us, we don't, we work alongside DFPS, but we don't have access to any information from their system or anything like that. Like we would have to ask them as well. Um, so if there's like some cases, I understand there's some cases that are a little more complex. Um, I We always have to refer you guys to DFPS to see if the youth is eligible for that. Okay, so the second benefit that youth have is called the education training voucher. So again, the tuition waiver, all it does is waive tuition and fees. Now our kiddos need to figure out, okay, how am I going to pay for living expenses while going to school? And so that's where this program comes in. Um, so this is basically a need-based benefit um, for uh, youth coming from foster care. Um, so most of our youth does show that they have a need. Um, the most that they can get per school year is $5,000. Um, so the youth may qualify for the whole $5,000 or, you know, a little bit under. Um, so the first priority is um, for funds to go towards housing and utilities. Um, again, um, these funds are mostly for living expenses while they go to school. So housing utilities is the priority. Um, so that's where the funds will go to first. Um, if the youth decides to go to a private school um, that does not accept the tuition waiver, um, then they can use ETV funds uh, to pay for those tuition and fees. Um, of course, we always try to encourage them to go to public school so um, that way they can use their tuition waiver. Um, but if the youth decides to go to private school, um, we can help with uh, tuition and fees. Um, any other expenses left over, it can be uh, go towards vocational training, um, personal living expenses, child care if they need it, um, books and school supplies. Um, they are allowed to buy uh, one computer throughout the use of ETV, so we always encourage them to buy a good computer um, because we can only help them buy one. Um, I believe it can be like up to $1,500 um, to buy a computer, um, so make sure they get a good one. Um, I know some kids, you know, they buy the cheap one and they try to save up the rest of the money, but then that breaks or doesn't last them that long, and then we're not able to help them with another. Um, for transportation, so the youth is not allowed to use ETV money uh, to pay, to buy a car, but if they already own a car, um, they can use ETV funds for car registration, car maintenance, car insurance. Um, they can use ETV money to buy a bicycle or pay for a bus pass, things like that. So the only thing they're not able to do is um, buy a car with it. So with ETV, um, to be eligible, it's pretty short. Um, it's very narrowed down. Um, so it's for youth who are at least 16 years old and still in foster care. So there are youth that are in high school, but say they 
are taking um, dual credit courses. So they're taking uh, courses that will give them college credit. Um, they can qualify for ETV. Um, for everybody else outside of high school, um, they have to be under 23 and they either have to age out of foster care are an extended foster care or they were adopted after turning 16 years old. Um, so if the youth fall under any of these three categories, um, they will qualify for ETV. Um, other youth that qualify as well is youth under the custody of the Texas Juvenile Probation Commission, um, tribal youth in foster care, or youth um, identified as unaccompanied refugee minors. Um, now, when it comes to ETV, it can be used for a total of 15 semesters. Um, or until the end of their uh, 23rd birthday, whichever one comes first. Um, something real quick. Um, this is a, a eligibility tool. So if you go, if you click on that website um, and you scroll down all the way down to foster care and education, um, you'll get this little tool. Um, basically, it asks questions and you answer it. And then um, in the end of it, I'll tell you whether the youth is eligible or not. Um, for ETV. So if that's something um, you would like to use, feel free. Um, you can always reach out to my, me as well and just, you know, ask me directly. That's fine too. Um, this is just another helpful tool. So when it comes to ETV, um, it basically helps with pretty much almost any degree. When it comes to like licensed career school or technical vocational training, the program does have to be at least one year. Um, and they have to get, um, it has to lead towards a certification for gainful employment. Um, so if the youth is in high school taking dual credit, they only need to be taking one college course or yeah, one, basically one course to qualify for ETV. Um, for everybody else outside of high school, um, they do need to be taking at least six semester hours. Um, so that's about two classes, give or take, depending on the school. And so that's considered part-time. So most of our youth are doing part-time. Um, but yeah, as long as they're doing six hours per semester, they qualify for ETV. Um, here's a quick diagram um, between the difference of tuition waiver and ETV. Um, so a lot of people get them confused thinking they're the same thing, um, but they're two separate benefits and the youth are able to use um, both of them at the same time if they qualify, you know, for ETV as well as a tuition waiver. So again, tuition waiver, all it does is waive tuition and fees at um, public um, college universities in the state of Texas. They have it for a lifetime as long as they access it before 25 and they don't need to pass that first class. Um, something to note, though, um, we have seen it happen. So if the youth is attending the school, um, they use their tuition waiver but say that they're not passing their classes, they go into academic probation, things like that. Um, the public school does have a right um, to not continue accepting the tuition waiver. Um, if the youth is not, is continuing to be in academic probation. Um, so in that case, the youth um, can actually take the tuition waiver and go to a different school and use it elsewhere. Um, so that can happen um, on a case-to-case -case basis. Um, so a public school has to take the tuition waiver, but later on, if the youth is in academic probation and not doing well, they can they have the right to decide not to accept it anymore. Um, but again, the youth will still have it. They can use it elsewhere if they want to. Um, now with ETV, it is a need based. So we have basically a calculation um, that we do um, calculating how much the youth will qualify for based on their need. Um, so ETV, they can use it at pretty much any post-secondary institution, as long as they've been accredited for in business for at least two years. Um, so they can use ETV uh, private or public. Um, they can get up to $5,000 per school year, um, and they can receive ETV from 16 years old all the way to the end of their 23rd birthday. Um, now, for ETV, they do have to be making SAP, which stands for Satisfactory Academic Progress, and that just means that they're in good academic standing with the school that they're attending. Now, even if, um, if say, the semester comes and they're not doing well, we don't take ETV away. We give them until their eighth semester um, to start needing uh, SAP. So we give them some time uh, to start uh, going into good academic standing. 
Um, so how does one get ETB? The first thing that they need to do is apply for financial aid. Um, thankfully, that's a requirement before they pretty much graduate high school. Um, so when it comes to financial aid, um, in the past, the opening date was October 1st, but this year, you know, it was a little different because um, they implemented a new system that they're doing. So hopefully next year it will be October 1st. But yeah, as soon as um, the application open, we encourage our youth to apply um, because some grants are limited are limited and given on a first come first serve basis. Um, now, if the youth does need assistance with their application, it's important that they go with someone that knows how to apply um, for their situation. Um, so they can go to a transition center, which I'll talk about um, here in a little bit. Um, or they can go to any, like, if they know someone at their high school, um, they can go to a local college uh, financial aid department as well for assistance, um, pretty much to get help with that. Um, something to note with ETV is that accepting financial aid loans does affect how much ETV they can get. So they do need to decline any loans. Um, they can accept anything free. They can accept scholarships, grants, you know, anything that's free money to them. Um, they can take that. The only thing is the loans are the thing that affects how much ETV they can get. Um, again, they have to show that they have a need. Um, so the loans like, you know, affects that. So um, please have them decline any loans that are offered. <laughs> um, the next step is to apply for Texas ETV. Our applications are all done online, texasetv.com. Um, it's pretty straightforward, um, but if they need assistance, they can always reach out to me um, to help them out fill, it, fill out the application. They just put in their information, the school they're attending. Um, one thing to note on the application, there is a space on there that asks for a case manager name and email. Um, if you want to get the same notifications as the youth, um, please have the youth put your name and email that way. Um, you can, you can get in contact with the coordinator processing the application as well. Um, and then at the end of the application, um, there is a section where the youth can put the names of all adults that they give permission um, to get information from us. So say they have a case manager um, and they give that case manager permission because they listed them. The case manager can call us and be like, hey, I just want to check in the status of this youth's application because the youth gave us permission. We're allowed to give that information. Now, if your name is not listed on there, then we don't give any information at all. Um, any information we get from the youth is confidential. So um, if you are someone that is going to assist the youth, please have the youth put your name under like permissions. Now we do have application deadlines. Um, this is just to submit the application. Um, so for each semester, we do have a deadline. So fall would be October 1st, a spring March 1st and summer July 1st. So these are kind of the soft um, deadlines. We do have a hard deadline. So that's on the end of each month. So for fall, the hard deadlines, October 31st, spring March 31st, and then summer July 31st. Um, again, this is just to submit their application. Um, so one thing to note, so the youth will submit their application to us. They'll be assigned a ETV coordinator. That will, that will be the person um, processing the application. So the coordinator will reach out to the youth um, via email and let them know, okay, we received your application. Now here's a list of documents that we will need from you. Um, the youth does not need to submit the documents all at once. They can submit it to a to their coordinator um, as they receive them. So with the documents, um, this is something new that was implemented this year. Um, and this is for them to receive the ETV funds for the semester. Um, so for fall, all the documents need to be submitted by December 31st for spring, May 31st, and for the summer, August 31st. Um, so all their documents have to be submitted um, by then um, in order for them to receive funding for the semester. Now, if the youth is turning 23, say in the middle of the semester, we do give them funds for the days they are 22 years old. So if they are turning 23, all their documents need to be submitted six weeks um, before turning 23.
Um, when it comes to ETV, they only need to submit one application per school year. Um, they'll just let the ETV coordinator know um, every semester they plan to uh, attend school. When it comes to documents, um, we ask that their full legal name is on there. Now we understand that, you know, some school documents don't really do that. So we just have to um, have them confirm to us like, hey, this is my document. My name's not on it, but I confirm that this is mine. Um, so when it comes to um, documents, we accept screenshots, um, pictures, as long as they're legible. Um, anything submitted to us, we ask that you give us uh, seven business days uh, to process. Okay, so the next step after submitting the application, um, and then the coordinator will send him an email, hey, this is what documents are needed. Um, now, documents are on a case-by-case -case basis. The coordinator will look at your case um, and let the youth know, hey, these are the documents I need. Um, this is just a general list of what most usually we ask for. Um, so, of course, we need the application. The ones you see in red, um, it's DFPS verification of eligibility. Um, so this is just a form um, letting us know that DFPS confirms that this youth is eligible for the tuition and for ETV, um, and then a copy of their tuition and fee waiver letter. Now these two forms are obtained from uh, someone from DFPS. Um, so if the youth doesn't know who to ask, we usually refer them to the PAL supervisor of the area um, and they can help them obtain those letters. Um, usually they just ask the youth for their name and their um, date of birth and then they look at up in their system and then they if the youth qual is eligible then they'll uh, provide those letters to them so we just need a, a copy of these one um, turned into us once and we keep it on file um, we also need a financial aid award letter the finalized um, showing that they declined all the loans that were offered um, we need a copy of their class schedule showing that they're going to at least uh, six semester hours for high school students they just need to show one class um, so the following three, the budget worksheet um, that's taken from us, um, that can be obtained, downloaded through our website, or um, they can ask their coordinator to send them a blank copy of it. Um, request of funds as well, that comes from our program. Um, so that can be downloaded on our website or uh, the coordinator again can provide a blank document. Um, we also ask for a direct deposit form. So the youth needs to have a checking account under their name. We do not issue checks. Um, it's all done direct deposit. So that is the initial list. Um, so this is when the youth um, just applied for the beginning of the year. Um, now, if they're transitioning into the following semester, so say they applied in the fall, now they're going into spring. Um, so they can reach out to their coordinator um, early on because um, the coordinator will, if they told the coordinator, hey, I'm going to the spring semester as well, the coordinator will email them, but they can always um, email their coordinator early on saying like, hey, you know, what do you need for me to get my funds as soon as possible for the spring? Um, so usually they'll ask for a new class schedule showing that they are going to at least six semester hours um, or if they're in high school, one class. An unofficial transcript showing that they're passing. Um, if they're not, we give them until their eighth semester to meet um, SAP. An updated financial aid award letter showing that they did decline any loans for the new semester. Um, and then another request of funds form, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Okay, so um, the budget worksheet, it's basically just a plan for what they plan to use ETV funds for. So it's just to put ETV money on there to see what they're going to use it for. It should not include a plan for, it should not include any money from scholarships, grants, um, any part-time jobs, like it should not be included in it. It's just ETV money. Um, so the student will budget for the semesters that they plan to attend to school and use ETV money. Um, if they are still in extend, say they're in foster care or in extended foster care, they cannot budget for like housing, utilities, food, clothing, because that is provided through basically foster care. 
Um, here is an example of how the budget worksheet looks like. Um, they're divided into three semesters, um, fall, spring, and summer. So the youth will fill the semesters that they plan to use ETV money for. Um, the coordinator will let them know how much they qualify for. Um, it just all needs to add up to that total amount um, per semester. Um, and then in the end, the total amount. So again, they just fill in the categories that they plan to use the money for. The next form is called the request of funds. Um, so this is a form that tells us where the money needs to go to. Um, so if the youth is under 21, we basically send the money directly to, on our end, we call them vendors. Um, so we send the money directly to um, the place that needs the money. Um, and we let them know, hey, this is to pay for rent for this youth. Um, so if the money is being used for housing, we just need a copy of the first and last page of the lease if the youth is on the lease. Um, or we need something called renting together contract, which I'll show an example here in a little bit. A renting together contract is if the youth is not on the lease and they're living, uh, say, like on uh, with relatives, with roommates, friends, you know, whoever it is. Um, if the money is going for utility, we just need a copy of the bill. Um, and any other, the rest of the money goes directly to the student. Um, again, so if the youth is 21 and older, um, all the money goes straight to them. So all the money will go straight to the youth and they're in charge of um, paying their bills um, once they're 21 and older. So here's an example of a request of funds form. Um, so this is basically letting us know that we need to send $1,000, the amount for housing, for rent um, to Apple Apartments Leasing Complex. I mean, excuse me, leasing leasing office. Um, so basically we send a thousand to them and we say, hey, this is to pay rent for this youth. Um, so they just need to submit one of these and then for any other like utilities, things like that. Um, here's an example of a renting together contract. Again, if the youth is not on the lease, um, they just need to um, turn in this form saying like, hey, I have somewhere to live. Um, and then they just put the amount that they're paying. If they're not paying anything, they just put zero. Um, so it just needs to be the youth and any parties. Um, if they do have a landlord, um, they do need to sign. Um, when it comes to ETV, it is not considered emergency funds. Um, so if the youth is in need of the money, they just need to apply as soon as possible and get all their documents turned in. Um, so we are not considered emergency. I know I have youth call me, you know, like, I need this money. Can you, like, rush the process? We, Since we're not considered emergency by the government, um, we don't have any, like, what's called expediting process, things like that. We're not allowed to have that. Um, so again, if the youth does need the funds, they just need to apply, send all their documents um, in, and then um, they'll get their funds. Um, so we do not ask for receipts. Um, so if the youth uses the money to pay for um, things that they need, we don't ask for receipts. Um, the maximum $5,000 is not guaranteed. Again, it's a, a formula that we use. Um, if the student only checks that they're attending one semester, the most that they can get is $1,666.67 for that semester. Um, so something I like to tell the youth is that even if they're not sure they're going to the next semester, um, I tell them to just still tell their coordinator that they are um, because things can change. They can change their mind. You never know. Um, just because I would rather them have the full access of the $2,500 for the semester versus the $1,666. So a lot of our youth are facing obstacles. Um, so myself and Drew, we go around talking to youth as well, different schools, um, different programs. Uh, a lot of them actually do know what they would like to do, but they don't know how to get started or, you know, most of the issues like, oh, well, I don't have the money. It's expensive. But, you know, that's where we come in and make them aware of the benefits that they have that they can use uh, to meet whatever goals that they do have. Um, so there are a lot of resources in different areas. Um, so just helping them understand like the difference between like grants, scholarships and loans. 
Uh, some of them don't know that loans are something you have to pay back. So just keeping that awareness with them, um, understanding the real cost of things, and then accessing resources in their community. Um, so one uh, re, uh, upcoming organization is called um, Operation Achieve Independence. So um, as you see the link on there, um, you can click on that and get more information. So this is a program that helps um, foster former foster care students um, with any obstacles that, you know, that's keep holding them back from continuing their education and things like that. Um, another resource is findhelp.org, acbampertha.com. You just go on that website, you put in your um, zip code and it, sh it shows up all the resources in that area. Um, another program is called Foster Love. Um, I, used to, I think they're still called Together We Rise, or that's what it was called. Um, but they have a rapid response program um, and they've been doing pretty well. They provide, you know, things, basically they're an emergency um, uh, crisis uh, program. So they provide any immediate um, immediate obstacles for the youth. So if they need a computer, you know, they need things um, like uniforms, whatever, they can help with that. Um, so the only thing with this program is that you do have to be a partner with them. So it's a form that you fill out. Um, it's pretty easy. And then you can refer the youth uh, to them. Um, another resource is the TA, um, dot texas.gov. If you click on that, um, it's a resource guide um, for basically regarding uh, foster care in the school system. So that's another great resource if you want to go through that. Um, when it comes to setting up students for success, um, so the youth does need to have a, a personal email account. Um, our a form of contact is through email. Um, so we always encourage them to use a personal email account they always will have access to because if they use a school email or college email and then they transfer or graduate, um, it may be hard for us to get in contact with them. Um, they do need to have a checking account again um, with a Roddy number and account number under their name because we don't do checks, it's all direct deposit. Okay, so um, Thankfully, there is a lot of foster care liaisons throughout Texas in the high school level um, or school district, as well as the college. So those links that you see in red is a directory of basically a list of all the foster care liaisons um, in the system. So um, if you're wanting to connect the youth or get in contact with the liaison in the high school or a school district level, um, you can uh, go through that directory and find that information. Um, as well as the college one as well, every college does have a foster care liaison. If the youth is, already knows, hey, I wanna go to this school, you know, you can get connect the youth um, to the foster care liaison to see what resources they have, things like that. Um, also, some uh, universities and colleges have uh, foster care alumni groups. Um, so these are basically organizations, a group of students that went through the same process as the youth coming in. Um, and so they're a great uh, support system for the youth coming in. Um, and a lot of them do have like um, resources as well. So some of them, you know, can provide um, uh, gas cards, grocery cards. Um, I know one college provided like furniture for youth. Uh, for their like dorm or apartment, things like that. So they're another great resource as well. Um, for youth living on campus, um, if they need assistance for those long breaks, like during uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, summer, things like that, um, they can get in contact with their school and let them know, hey, I need assistance during those breaks. And the school can assist them with that. So for example, during, um, COVID, they sent all the students home, but some of our youth were able to stay on campus due to their situation. So they just need to stay in contact with the school. Okay, another resource is Supervised Independent Living or SIL, um, or you, you, if you know it as Extended Foster Care as well. Um, I believe it's up to 21 years old, but it's another uh, great um resource if the youth decides to um, stay in extended foster care. There's different programs throughout Texas. 
Um, so I can't give a general of what each program does because they're all a little different. Um, for the But for the most case, um, the youth will have like a case manager assigned to them that will check in on them, um, let, you know, ask them, hey, anything you need, things like that. And a lot of uh, colleges, universities are adopting a supervised independent living um, where the youth is able to stay on campus, um, either on the dorms or any shared like apartments that they have um, and their meal plans are paid for, things like that. So there's a lot of different programs. Um, there is a link on the bottom of this uh, slide in blue um, if you want to um, get more information on that. So real quick, um, when it comes to schools, um, so in Texas, if the youth is not interested in a traditional two-year, four-year college university, um, there are two technical schools in the state of Texas that accept the tuition waiver and the youth can use their ETV money. Um, so the first one is Texas State Technical College. Um, they do have several locations in Texas and each location does have a foster care liaison. Um, and they have uh, different programs as well, as well where the youth you know, can get certified, things like that. Um, so this is another great option for youth who you know, don't want to do the traditional four-year, two-year college. Um, they um, can do programs in uh, Texas Technical College. The second one is the Lamar Institute of Technology or LIT. Um, here they do accept the tuition waiver and um, the youth is able to use um, ETV money as well. Um, for this school, it's located in Beaumont. Um, if you don't know where that is, it's um, between Houston and the state line of Louisiana. So it's like in that area. Um, they have, that's their only location, but they do have several programs as well, um, if the youth is interested in that. Um, and their uh, foster care liaison right now is Mr. Jamarcus Quirks. Um, so again, if the youth is interested, there are two um, technical schools in Texas. Um, another option, Texas A&M University. Um, I know there's different locations. There's Corpus Christi and they're in Kingsville as well. Um, but basically, they do have a foster care liaison and they also uh, have adopted a supervised independent living as well. I don't list all the schools because that would take too long. Um, so there are a couple. If the youth is interested in San Antonio, um, we do have a pilot program called Bear County Fostering Educational Success. So it's a pilot program. Um, they're hoping to, you know, uh, be able to spread it throughout Texas. Um, so it's basically an additional support for our youth. Um, so Texas A&M is part of that program. Um, they also have supervised independent living. Um, so the youth has that extra support here. And then as well, we have a room donated by Whataburger that's filled with like it pretty much school supplies, things needed for, you know, college. And so the youth is able to go in there, get what they need, and they don't have to pay for anything. Um, so we have that available for them. Um, UTSA is part of that program. Um, as well, and they have supervised independent living. That's the foster care liaison information. Again, I only put a couple here. Um, Alamo Colleges, that's our uh, community college system. Um, if the youth wants to go out of state, a lot of these Ivy League um, schools do have programs where um, if the household is under a certain amount, um, you can uh, qualify for a program where you can get free tuition to attend these schools. Um, the only thing you need to work on is getting into these schools. Um, so if also if the youth decides to go out of state, they can take their ETV money with them. Now, if it's an out of state school, um, they can't use the tuition waiver because it's out of state, it's not in Texas. But if they qualify for ETV, they can uh, use ETV money for an out of state school. Um, what I always like to encourage youth, if they do decide to go out of state, I always encourage them to take at least one college course in the state of Texas. Um, so that way they can unlock the tuition waiver and then they can go out of state school. And then if they decide to come back to Texas because they unlock their tuition waiver, they can continue using it. Um, real quick. So we go by DFPS region. So when we say like, oh, region this, region that, um, this is what we're referring to.
Um, so when it comes to aftercare benefits, so youth can receive, um, so this is basically when they're like aging out of foster care, um, they can receive transitional living allowance of up to a thousand, usually it's split up into two five hundred dollars. Um, so this is if they completed their PAL classes. Um, they have case management until the age of 21. They can get aftercare room and board assistance up to 3,000. This is split up, um, but they can get up to 3,000. Um, they can be reimbursed for expenses like cap and gown, class ring, as funds are available. Um, they can have uh, medical insurance until the age of 26 years old. Um, they always have access to someone from the Texas Workforce Commission until the age of 25. So they can have an advocate um, at Texas Workforce Com uh, Commission. Um, they always have an access to an education specialist until they're 25 years old. And of course, um, they do, if they qualify, they can get ETV and the tuition waiver as well. Um, I, I mentioned a little bit about transition centers earlier. So each region does have at least one transition center. Um, this is basically a physical location where youth can go for any services that they need. Um, so it's like a one-stop shop. So um, most of these transition centers, um, they, they can get information about, you know, ETV, their tuition waiver, they can get um, preparation for adult living training, they can get a case manager, if they need housing assistance, transportation assistance. Um, again, they always have access to someone from Texas Workforce Commission, so if they need assistance with like jobs, resume building, um, interview skills, things like that. Um, when it comes to their education support, um, they always have access to an education specialist, as well as um, a lot of them do offer free um, mental health counseling there. Um, there's also a computer lab. So if the youth needs to use a computer, um, they're free to use one there. Um, there's always a kitchen or a pantry. So if the youth needs you know, a place to be safe and just to eat something, um, they can stop by there and get something to eat. Um, so like here in San Antonio, um, so we're based in San Antonio, but again, we cover the whole state. Um, we do have some youth that are homeless and they stop by during the day at our building um, and they just grab a bite to eat, things like that. So that's available for them. Um, so in that region, uh, which you guys are considered region 11, um, BCFS is the one that um, has the transition center. So there's one in Corpus. Um, so you can uh, provide the information to um, whichever one is closest to the youth. Um, so there's one in McAllen as well, and then another one in Harlingen. Um, I'll provide a copy of um, this presentation. I can send it to you, Jalen. <laughs> so um, you can pass, on, pass it on to everyone who is here. Um, if the youth um, is going to school in that area, their ETV coordinator would be Galjet. So this is the person that will be processing the application. The youth can send all their documents to this person. Um, so myself and Drew, again, we're the two ETV specialists. So we do presentations. Um, if you have events where we can set up a table, you know, to give to uh, information to staff or to youth, um, please reach out to us. Um, so we basically reach out to, we do outreach. So we do a lot um, with the youth um, or um, professionals that work with um, the youth coming from foster care. Um, we also do what's called application sessions. So if you want to gather, say, a group of um, youth that you know qualify for um, ETV, you can put them together. Drew and I can come in and we help them on like live on the spot um, submit their applications and answer any questions that they have. Um, so we do that as well. So feel free to pass our information to other people that you think would benefit, you know, hearing from us and connecting us, things like that. Um, so for that area, the PAL coordinator or the PAL supervisor would be Jesus de Leon. So if the youth doesn't, you know, know who to, like who to talk to from CPS, or if they're not comfortable talking to their direct caseworker, they can reach out to the PAL supervisor and they can provide um, information about their benefits um, through CPS as well as provide those two letters that I mentioned earlier. Um, the education specialist is Mitzi Puentes as well. So anything regarding education wise, um, this is a person that can help with that. So when it comes to um, students, 
um, that are applying. So this is if they apply for ETV, they can join. We use an app called Remind. Um, so this is basically, um, we send reminders of when deadlines are coming up, um, updates about FAFSA, things like that. Um, and also the youth can message us through this app. So say they don't have my, my information or Drew or someone from ETV program, um, they can message through here if they're in the class and we can see their message and message them back. Um, we also have one for uh, professionals as well. So if you would like to join our uh, CASA class where you receive those same updates our youth does, um, you can just text um, 81010, I mean, ca at CASA ETV to 81010, excuse me. Uh, or you can just join through remind.com. Um, there's a QR code there as well. Um, we do have a Facebook page. So if you would like to stay updated with like uh basically deadlines, things, you know, coming up. Um, so we do post flyers that are sent to us by different um, agencies throughout the state of Texas. Um, so they're basically just events that, you know, are for youth coming from foster care, things like that. And so we'll post what area it's for. Um, I do have two pages of scholarship. So if you want to pass this on to the youth, um, they can do their own research on different um, websites and see what scholarships they want to apply to to get additional money. Um, there are two uh, scholarships through DFPS. Um, not a lot of youth are applying to this or they may not know about it, but it is available to them. The first one is Freshman Success Fund for Foster Youth. Um, so this is if they're first time college freshmen, um, they can receive up to uh, four one-time grants of $1,000. Um, and this is basically to help them pay for non-tuition related things like books, supplies, computers, whatever they need um, for their school. Um, the second one is Ed Davis Powell Scholarship. So this is for the upperclassmen. So if they're sophomore, junior, senior, um, they do have to be majoring in government, political science, history, or other pre-law. Um, and they can get uh, $1,000 per academic school year. So the red link down there um, has more information on that. And that's where they can, uh, the youth can apply to as well. Um, I do have a list of resources. If you're looking for a specific area, um, like you need to get in contact with the PAL supervisor in a certain area, um, you can just click on that link and look it up. So these are different resources for you guys as well. Are there any questions? I haven't checked in the chat, so I'm not sure if there's any questions. I have a few questions, and then I'm okay. sure if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to add them to the chat, and I'll go ahead and read them. Um, for GED, um, for example, I had a, a foster youth who aged out, and then she did not graduate from high school. Would she be able to qualify for the tuition waiver or I know you had mentioned ETV, um, they, they would have to have graduated. So would she qualify to get help to get her GED through the tuition waiver or how does that work? Yeah, so GED does count. We don't say that because it's not very common for our youth to get GEDs, but no, she should, um, the youth should still be able to qualify for their benefits. Like as long as they have some kind of, for, as far as I know, unless DFPS changed that and I'm not aware of it, but as far as I know, um, they um, should qualify for their benefits because they did get some, they did technically get some kind of, like they got a high school education somehow, right? So. And then a follow-up question to that, um, since she does live out of state, would she be able to still take like GED online classes to qualify for GED? Or is that oh. not optional? Oh, you mean, she, oh, okay. So she hasn't received her GED yet. Right, she has not received her GED. So she would need assistance gaining her GED, but she moved out of state. Okay, so she should be able to do her GED. And once she, um, so she should, let me see. Yeah, that's where a complex <laughs> case comes in. Um, so I honestly, I would refer her to like the the area that she was in foster care. Um, if she still has contact with anyone from there uh, to get information, because she should be able to get her tuition waiver 
from them. Usually they give it to them like before they graduate high school or in her case, you know, she's almost going to get her GED. Um, but yeah, when she gets her GED, though, um, she should be able to qualify for her benefits as long as she's still in like foster care. So. Okay. And so another question, I'm sorry. So she's out of state, as I mentioned, would she still, would she be able to qualify for the 5,000 assistance benefit living out of state, but attending a school in Texas? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. So the way it works is like each state is responsible for the youth that are in foster care of that state. So no matter where they go in the U.S., whatever state they were in foster care, like that state is in charge of that youth. Um, so, yeah. So if she's living out of state, you know, and she gets her GD um, and she aged out of foster care, um, she will qualify for ETV. Um, again, she can use her ETV out of state school as well. So she can, but if she does want to use her tuition waiver, it does have to be a school in the state of Texas. So if she wants to do online classes, yeah, she can use her tuition waiver and she'll get ETV. If she decides to go to a college in whatever state she's living in, um, she can still qualify for Texas ETV and use it to whatever school she's going to. Even though it's out of state? Yeah. Yeah, because Texas is in charge of her. So Texas is responsible for taking care of her education needs. And would you happen to know if the technical colleges offer online classes? Um, I am not too sure. Um, Because like the Texas Technical State, they have different locations. And so they all, they're about the same but of course each location does have different things as well um so i would honestly if you know a specific school um just look up the foster care liaison and get in contact with them and be like hey do you have any online programs you know things like that so that's the best way because there's tons of school in texas so i don't keep track of which ones offer what programs or majors and like online stuff so Okay. Uh, the reason why I was asking was because I know at these tech schools, they do a lot of hands-on things. So I wasn't sure if maybe they offered something like that. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, I would just go ahead and check with them. Uh, they may have something along those lines, um, but I'm not too sure about that. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, Jennifer, this is Julie. Um, TSTC does offer online courses. It all depends on what you're going for. Um, but they do have some online, like uh, um, the hygienist, there's a lot of online courses, mm -hmm. but they do offer that. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions for Ms. Crystal? Okay, Ms. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, if you are joining us live as a volunteer, we'll be entering your um, continuing education for you in Optima. If you are watching the recording, you're going to want to enter that yourself in Optima or get with Ms. Uh, Jaylene, our outreach coordinator at jaylene.garza at brushcountrycasa.org um, so that she can help you and add those hours in for you. If no one has anything else, uh, again, I want to thank you for being here today. Ms. Sander, did you have something? I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Ms. Lopez and to you all for this, you know. Well, maybe I do, uh, but maybe you already answered that. Uh, these people, uh, when they reach 18, they have to continue being with the department, correct? Or they're away from, like, they're not with the uh, department of, you know, the, with the, um, with CPS anymore. Yes. So it depends. So it's a case by case. So if a youth is 18, they it's called aging out. So right. we totally understand if they're like, I want nothing to do with CPS. I don't want to get in contact with anyone. Right. That's fine. Um, so that's why we refer them to um, a PAL supervisor, because all they do is they're they do preparation for adult living. So they work with the youth in transitioning from 
you know, being in the system to aging out. So transitioning into adulthood. Um, so they have nothing to do with what happens to their current case, things like that. They're just basically a extra support for them. Um, sometimes, you know, the youth just like, I just need my tuition waiver and I just need this letter. That's all I need from you. And that's okay. Right. Um, so we just need a copy of that. So it depends on the youth situation. They can decide to not want to be in the system anymore, or they can decide to be in extended foster care. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Sandra. Any other questions? Okay, Ms. Crystal, again, thank you so much for being here with us. If you could email Jaylene, the PowerPoint, we'll be able to send that out along with the recording of this video. Um, and then again, thank you all for joining us today and have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.